What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, Dream Builder? We are back again with another episode. And for this episode, I am so excited because we're going to talk about two things that are so important right now in the world, no matter where you are. Number one, that's your health. But number two, that's how do you gain more assets over liabilities? Shout out to my EYL family and everybody who has showed love through my episode release. And so today we have an expert, a superwoman, a wonder woman on the show today. Miss is Rachel. Gainsburg. Rachel, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? Absolutely. And Casanova, I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here with you today. Just thank you so much for bringing on the top guests and dropping as much value as possible to the audience. I cannot thank you enough for the energy that you put into this podcast and for the value that you provide for all of us out there. So thank you. Thank you. Massive. Thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And I'm excited to share your story with Dream Nation and with the world today. And uh, I want to start off a little bit differently today, if you don't mind. I want to start it off with a little bit of an icebreaker. And uh, I just want to know, just for me, curiously, um, (laughs) tell me what's one thing that the world would not expect of you because everybody's been seeing you you've been doing now netflix you've been on the world's best podcast and you really are crushing it out there but what's one thing that we don't know about you that we would not expect i think perhaps that i struggle with writing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is my like kryptonite. I often get bottlenecked by having to write my own content and having others look over my shoulders. So I got to tell you, I'm, I'm just sharing my secrets, spilling my tea, but writing is not my superpower at all. And oftentimes people are surprised when I say that because I love to speak, but it's the writing for me, Casanova. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I can definitely agree with that because I think that that's one of mine as well. And I think that's where being born and and coming alive in this era has helped us all because before you would be like, oh, I had to start a blog, but now you don't really need to. You could speak your truth and then get it, you know, transcribed and get it turned into books and articles and everything else. So uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that's listening at this right now that says, girl, me too. Right. And so I, I, I love it. So let's tap into um, you. You have a phenomenal story and I want the world to definitely be able to hear it. But you've taken an unconditional route to be now a real estate empire builder. And so let's take it back to when you were a young girl and tell us how like what has your journey been like? Talk to us about when you grew up. Did you grow up in entrepreneurship or what did that look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So a little girl from Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. I was raised in the inner cities of Miami, Florida. So there was not a lot of entrepreneurship modeled um, in my life. As a matter of fact, I was taught the traditional route of education and I'm grateful for it. You know, it was like faith and education, go to school, don't get a job, focus, focus, go to school. And so I, that's what I did, that's what I knew. Uh, made the good grades, got the doctorate, graduated. And I'm thinking, okay, great, graduated, got the doctorate. Um, let me go and buy myself this Range Rover. Let me go and build this big house. But I forgot one very important situation. And that was the half a million dollars in student loans that was going to be crushing me momentarily once my grace period was over. And so entrepreneurship was not a part of the recipe growing up. Uh, Financial literacy was not a part of the recipe growing up either. I had to learn quickly, Casanova. Otherwise, my health was in danger. My marriage was in danger because of that amount of debt. It was quite crushing. And so that's where it all started. And I realized quickly as we, my husband and I, we grinded it out. Uh, to get that debt paid down, we realized quickly that we did not want to be working like that or, you know, a W-2 forever for the rest of our lives. And that's when we looked to real estate uh, for for launching our um, foray into entrepreneurship. I love it. And 
there's a lot of people that's going to be able to connect with that, right? Nobody, for the most part, I would say I've met very few people, whether it's on the podcast or even outside of the podcast, that has really been taught about money and financial literacy, right? Unless your parents are a wealth advisor or something like that, you're really not taught that. You're taught how to just survive in the world, right? Now, not how to thrive in the world when you start learning about taxes and assets and investing. Talk to me about, though, when you first got started, because there's a lot of people, especially with inflation and debt and everything that's happening in the country right now there's a lot of people that are in debt that's trying to figure out how do they start to um snowball some of this debt to to coming down so what was some of the first key things that you did outside of just grinding and working because you have to pay it is there any book that you read or what started to get you on the journey of saying hey i can even get out of this debt Yeah, for me, I actually followed the debt snowball method of Dave Ramsey, honestly speaking. I went that route and I was a math tutor. I was, um, I taught calculus and I was astonished that I missed that part of, you know, how the taxes would have impacted me. And so for me, although mathematically it was more sound to pay off the highest interest rate, this was not a math situation. This was a mindset situation. This was a keeping up with the Joneses situation. This was a, I, you know, was living in Miami initially and all my cousins are doing this situation and I wanted to look the part. How do I, a big old doctor, how do I look living in an apartment, right? How do I look? So I had to keep up this, um, you know, this facade. And it's when my husband just really looked at me and he made it clear, if we don't do something about this, this is not going to work out. Stop thinking about society. And I'm from like Haiti, like I said, French backgrounds, like society, society's judging you. He's like, he's not from that. He's not about that. He's like, who is society? Name me, like list them for me. I will go and talk to society and ask them what's going on. (laughs) So that's, (laughs) he goes, is society going to pay your bill? And so Casanova, we sold this 4,000 square foot, 4,500 square foot home that the three of us were living in. We um, got out of private school. My kids' private school tuition was more than my college undergrad tuition. We sold the cars, we sold the furniture, we sold everything, everything. Downsized from 4,500 square feet to a 1,300 square foot apartment. Wow. And that's when, like, for me, I was either going to end up in therapy because of that, <laughs> right? Or right. or just retrain my brain that I can't care about what others think about how I live my life as long as I'm doing what's best for myself, my family, my current situation. And so everyone had something to say. Like, yeah. what is he doing to her? <laughs> like my husband, my poor husband. What are, what's going on here? What's the church going to say? What's so-and-so going to think? The amount of I don't care that I had to build up. I had to build up this resiliency because they weren't with me when I was working those 14-hour shifts looking good on the outside, but on the inside, I was burnt out. And so <laughs> I became cranky. I didn't care. I was like, I got to pay this off because... When your student loan debt exceeds your mortgage by three or four X, you have to (laughs) do something. And so it was a drastic amount. It's not for everyone. I'm not saying everyone go out and do all that, but drastic times call for drastic measures. We had to like open the floodgates and allow the revenue to make an impact and not just, you know, a hundred dollars here chipping away little by little. So if there is something excessive, I would say to the audience, if there's something excessive in your life that you can say, you know what, do I really need this? Can I sacrifice this for a time to make an impact on the greater good? Do that because you're not going to sacrifice it forever. It's just for a time. It's for a season. And for that season, that was the method we used. Would I go back and use it today? No, because I've gone, been there, done that, right? And now I'm at a, a different phase in life. So it's not long term. It's not temper, you know, forever. I don't live on beans and rice all the time. I, although I like beans and rice, I'm not gonna lie. I'm from Haiti, so I like me some beans and rice. So that was an hey, easy sell. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm in. I love beans and rice, though. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. So so 
Okay, fully transparent. That is the story. I don't think I've ever told anyone that part of it, but that is- No, I that love it. Story. I, we already getting gems and we just getting started. I, I love it, I love it. <laughs> now, I think the second part of this that I wanna tap into uh, before we go deep into how you've built your empire in real estate is you talked about you had to develop this crazy, I just don't care, right? And I think that a lot of people have to do that, but they struggle to know how do I stay on the path, right? So what I mean by that is, a lot of the times we are influenced by our environment. So now you talked about the church, you talked about your family, your friends, all these people that are saying, what is he doing to her? That's not the girl that we know, <laughs> like, and love, right? And so how was it for you? Was it books? Was it like, what did you all do to get to, to have your, your saving grace, right? Of knowing this is the path that we're on. What were you constantly tapping into? You see, that's what's interesting because when I'm all in, I'm all in, right? And so I came from, you know, a, just loose with the spending, free spirit to complete frugality. My husband, he's more, he toes the line. He knows how to balance things. He, he'll he do something in moderation. So I, I went all in. And so for me, it was the podcast consumption that was consuming that podcast and then I found an online community of individuals is like a forum on some I want to say janky website <laughs> like backwoods and yeah. it was just kind of hodgepodge put together but we kept each other accountable accountability is key you can't do it alone at least I can't you know there are, I feel as though my husband's that person he has his gym schedule He'll write it on the wall, you know, and he'll keep up with himself. I need, I'm the girl who needs other people to, you know, keep me accountable. And so for me, accountability was key. Finding a network of other individuals going in that same direction for me was everything. And I actually look for that in all areas of my life as well. So I have accountability when it comes to health and wellness. And I have, a, you know, a little group that I'm a part of. I have accountability when it comes to uh, real estate investing. I have accountability when it comes to, um, you know, time management time blocking and so whenever I feel as though I I'm struggling with an area or pillar of my life instead of trying to figure it all out on my own I ask myself who who can I partner with who do I need in my life or you know who not necessarily how all the time because there's all that stuff there's so much information I'm drowning in information you know, it's the execution, right? Who do I need in my life to partner with me? It's the buddy system so that we can make things happen because the information is out there. But to make that movement, to move the needle in my life, it's always been being a part of some type of accountability system, whether it's, you know, a private coach, group coaching, um, a co-working group, all of those things. I love all of it with uh, any struggle that I'm, I'm facing per se, whether it's a family, marital, I look for who do I need to come alongside me to help me along with this. I love it. I love it. And I think that that's how you had such a, I would imagine, I'm, I'm excited to tap into this next, but this is how you have had such a, um, a phenomenal career thus far in real estate, because in real estate, we talk about all the time, like it is the who you cannot do it by yourself, especially if you're trying to buy property outside of your state or your area, you need boots on the ground, you need a strong team. And I think even in business, a lot of people want to start their own business. They want to start a side hustle, but they're just like you said, there's so much information out there that a lot of the times even if you want to execute on it you can't execute on everything alone you have to have other people because we all need that sanity part of our own family of being able you can't work 24 hours a day it's not healthy right even if you're working 18 hours a day you still need that time to be with your loved ones or with somebody else that can help take your mind off of it no matter how business strong you are and that means that you're going to need other people behind you that support your business systems hopefully you have some type of system that can help you keep going so i love that you brought that part up and hopefully somebody takes heed on that and that is the the part that they say oh instead of me always thinking about how i start focusing on the who's and there is a book out there that is phenomenal yes. who not how <laughs> have you read it yep dan henry uh dan sullivan and dan sullivan yep yes i forget his phenomenal name. book yeah uh, yeah i have this one too the gap in the game is another one oh. that i like as well 
Yeah. Right. So again, <laughs> nuggets on nuggets and you're yeah. hearing it from somebody who's actually applying it and doing it. So you don't have to feel like, oh, well, they're just talking. No, it's it's we've done it, you know, and she's done it and she's still doing it. So, OK, let me just at least try it and see if I can get some type of gains from it. Yeah. Right. And so talk to me now. This is a great segment into uh, how did you st- like of all of the things that you could have did, right? You're super smart. You now have a doctorate or something that probably less than 1% of the world is able to obtain. And like, why real estate of all things? Why didn't you go into crypto or just consulting? Why real estate? Yeah, that's a great question. And I thought about crypto. It's like you're reading my mind, right? So I thought about crypto, but at the time, I couldn't quite figure it out. And so for me, my mindset was if I don't understand it, I can't hedge (laughs) and go into something that, you know, at some point you can play around with your investments and your money. But at that time, I was like, I'm not trying to just deliberately go into something I don't understand and just lose money because I didn't understand it. So I didn't understand it. I don't think I understand it still, to be honest with you. (laughs) So um, what do I understand And, and what would provide me not only a revenue stream, but an asset as well. It, it was real estate. It was a no brainer. I had become obsessed with real estate, a way to generate revenue without having to punch a clock day after day after day. And I can touch it. I can see it. I'm like, okay, I get it. It's real. So for me, the, it was such a low barrier of entry is to go into real estate. However, within real estate, there are so many different sectors, right? There is, I thought you to myself, okay, I'm burnt out. I need to find a way to get in and not spend too much money because I'm on this frugal kick. So I'm like, wait, what's the cheapest way to get in? That's not going to cause me a lot of time. And I saw a lot of marketing on things. I was like, okay, obviously wholesaling, right? Right. Wrong. (laughs) So I started off looking at wholesaling, but I realized quickly um, it's going to be a time co- commitment. And so I, I would tell your audience, um, understand the cost. Don't just look at the wonderful copywriting. You know, there's some great marketers out there, but understand really, what does it look like if I wholesale? What does it look like if I'm a fix and flipper? What does it look like if I'm a realtor? What does it look like? So understand what the cost is. And so again, I have this doctor is my time Uh, better spent knocking on doors and putting out flyers or working my nine to five, getting the six figures that would allow me to purchase property. Everyone's at a different phase, but my 19 year old brother go wholesale all day on the side where you're getting your, you know, degree. So it, it depends on where you are. It's not for everyone. Everything is not for everyone. Everything is not for everyone at all phases of life. So let's just be realistic with where we are in life, right? And so I quickly knocked down wholesaling uh, for me as a, you know, just to start, um, unless I had a team behind me, like you said a little bit earlier, who not how. The next thing was fix and flip. Is that a good fit for me? Did I want to project manage adults and, you know, run after them? When are you going to come in? So I realized that's part of that role. You have to be really good with project management and chasing adults down and asking for the same things over and over again. And 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 when you get there, it's not anything like you'd imagine. Now we got to redo and your timeline and your budget is busted. You know, I didn't want to do that, right? Yeah. I was still working full time. If I was not working full time, I could probably um, absorb that commitment of time, but I didn't want to do that. So I went into long-term landlording, looked at that, and you know, I found a great deal. Um, a It was a 20 unit in Georgia for 300,000. I'm like, oh, this would be great. But when yeah. I looked at the rent roll, they're all paying 160 a month. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wait a minute, I want to live there. <laughs> Let me live there because right. like, I was on a frugal kick. I was like, they they got a maid, but you right, know. they definitely had a maid. <laughs> How long ago was this? I know, like 2019, but it was a very challenged area. I will say this: it was quite a, a scary area. Yeah. Okay, so I thought to myself, okay, dealing with 20 very needy, you know, tenants. Is that going to enhance my life or no? No. And so that's when I went all in on short-term rental Airbnb investing, um, higher end luxury, where I am providing a service 
and providing a home that not only I can rent as a short-term rental, but one that I can utilize myself as a place to vacation. So it's my life by design, like we were talking about a little bit earlier. It's an asset that I can actually use and enjoy. And I'm on this kick. I want to only buy things that I, I also can enjoy. Right. <laughs> you know, that's paying me back money. And so I started with one. Then got the second one, Air DNA reached out, a casting company reached out as well. That's the one that's on Netflix and we're building uh, a few as well. One on the beach, we have a few in the mountains. So and it's not one of those things, casting over where I'm going to be that girl that owns a hundred doors. I get jealous when I speak to the other, you know, people in the community who are doing multifamily syndication. We got a hundred doors. I get jealous, just like everyone else. You know, you got all the doors. But for me, it was more of how do I own and operate the fewest number of properties that generates the highest profitability. So mine is a quality over quantity play, mm -hmm. and so that's really why I pour into each property. I want to maximize the profitability of each property because here's the deal. You mentioned a little bit earlier that the interest rates are rising, that you know we have faster than expected um, recessions, but here's the deal. We have significant tax loopholes for short-term rentals that people may not be taking advantage of. And these are the loopholes that are allowing me and my community to see anywhere from 80 to 200%. ROI grows as we're doing um, bonus depreciation against our W-2s. So this is really something that short-term rental hosts can take advantage of. So that's, you know, that's my bread and butter. That's what I'm looking at for this year and the next three years at least. We want to invest in short-term rentals because those benefits do phase out after three years or so. Yeah, there's so much to unpack here. I'm, I'm very, very excited. The first thing that I want somebody that's still listening at this to, to take heed of is you, ha you, you knew who you were. You were that girl who you come from Haiti, like you said. You did like the flashy lifestyle. You're living in Miami. That was a good thing. But then you also had to be realistic to say that because of the situation that I'm in right now, it's, it's a season, not forever. I got a lot of debt. I got to get out of this debt. But... I'm coming back for you lifestyle, right? And you then came back. And so you could have went into all of these things that were not you because you knew who you were as a young girl. You knew what gave you excitement and joy, but you let that go for a little bit. But then you said, okay, instead of going into long-term rentals or something that was more boring than not me, I'm going back to my lifestyle in the way that I want to. And I'm going to get luxurious assets now that pay me and still allow me to be able to be more of who I am. I'm not in that season anymore. So I think that there's somebody out there that's listening at this that says you know what like i hate that i gotta give up my lifestyle but understand that if you're just willing to sacrifice and have discipline for a short amount of time you can get that lifestyle back by doing something that you love and also building cash flow the appreciation getting everything that in that long term so i want somebody else to hear that and hopefully they take heed on that to say listen i'm gonna set a period of one to two years pay off whatever little debt that i have right or get out of it however i need to so then i can focus on the investing side um right and i think that that was so key so critical and and i love to hear that you went back into who you truly are now tapping into it now it just started to get really good and uh and not that it wasn't good already but now you're starting to talk about some plays and some hacks to where people can really start to be like this is why this is for me so talking to me about anybody who currently is either thinking about getting into airbnb or maybe they just got their first airbnb and they are not um privy to the information on taxes what you talked about for three years so like what are some of those tax benefits that somebody might not know about if they're thinking about doing a short-term rental yeah what's great is there's something called um 100 bonus depreciation and speak to your tax advisor uh, or your cpa about it tell them to look it up now all cpas know about this which is unfortunate right because not all cpas are very well versed in real estate so it's really important to start getting into those rooms where those cpas are investing in real estate themselves and investing in short-term rentals so what the 100 bonus depreciation does it's something that's been here for years and years Years, and a lot of the multifamily, like the apartment investor groups, they've been leveraging that. So um, whereas you can get depreciation, meaning write-offs for a percentage of your property year after year after year for a number of years, like 30 years, 30 years with, 
yeah, with this, instead of waiting for fractions per year, you can accelerate it all on year one. Mm. You accelerate it year one, okay? And I'm not gonna speak as eloquently as the CPAs out there, <laughs> you know, cause they can give you all- Not the financial advice. advice. Right, this isn't financial advice and I know they can explain it a million times better than me, but you accelerate all of it. And so what's done is what's called a cost segregation study. They come in and they say, okay, you bought this house saved for $200,000. The land is worth 50,000. The other 150,000 is the property where they segment out the cabinets are worth this, the electrical is worth this, the plumbing is worth this. And those things depreciate over time. Even the furnishings that you're going to furnish are allocated. You can allocate it in there as well. And instead of depreciating over time, they accelerate it and you you can get 100% of that this year. And so mm -hmm. that, those losses can count against your W-2. So if say you're in a tax bracket of, you know, the second or third tax bracket, it actually can bring you down a tax bracket and you can, you end up paying less taxes uh, the legal way. You know, and then now you have more revenue that you can invest in the next property. So for this year, 2022, you get 100% of that accelerated year one. For 2023, you get 80% of it accelerated and then 60% accelerated. That's why I've been um, sharing with my W-2 people, like hurry up and get a short-term rental because otherwise, the only other way to do something like that is if you buy a long-term rental and you become what's called a real estate professional, which is like a whole, it's hard to prove that you are a real estate professional if you already have a full-time job. You have to like work as a real estate professional, like a number, a denominator above your W-2 hours. And really, you know, if you're working full-time W-2, it's not gonna be feasible for you to do that as a real estate professional. So this short-term rental loophole or, or, or benefit, it bypasses that you don't need real estate professional status. You just need to prove that you materially participated and it takes about a hundred hours to materially participate. You research the property, you know, you know, you already on Zillow all night. That's already a hundred hours. <laughs> Right, thanks. <laughs> you ordered furnishings off of, you know, the various places, Amazon, Target, Linens, you, all of those things can count. But of course, talk to your tax professional to understand exactly how those hours are broken down. So that's something that I've been telling everyone, please, if you can take advantage, I don't want anyone in your community to miss out on that because I know right now, people are hesitant due to the interest rates, but something like that could really offset, I'm not saying buy property based off of just the tax strategy, the numbers still have to make sense. But if you're on the fence because of the interest rate, this is a reason that you probably should still move forward if the numbers shake out. So while people are shopping for the holidays, people are shopping for all, all of the things and they're being consumers, be an investor during the holidays. Mm -hmm invest because there are benefits out there for you. And these are benefits, Casanova, I'm passionate about because these are not the benefits that were taught to me. How do you think others are speaking to their children at the dining table, you know, who are who have abundance and affluence and generations of it? These are the strategies that they are leveraging. I need for our community to know to leverage these strategies as well. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. It's, this is so good. And just like you said, there's a lot of people that are talking to their children and their grandchildren about, hey, you know, here's how you have to be preparing for recessions, preparing for the future. These are the times that it's an opportunity zone. Some people look at it as, oh, I need to, you know, just hoard. No, what you need to do is figure out how you can get a team. So the people that are now selling off, right? Warren Buffett says when others are being fearful, that's when you be greedy. Right now, it's a time that the media is putting a lot of fear into people. This is where you have to be focusing on how do you accumulate assets, not accumulating a new car or something like that, because even no matter what you're buying, you have to ask yourself. And I think you said this earlier, which was so powerful is how will this contribute to my life? Right. As in, like, will this make it so two years from now, three years from now, I'm so much happier that I invested into this. Right. And ask yourself, even if you're like, OK, well, one of the most simpler simple things that i learned early on in my career was just would a wealthy person do this 
right? And you can, and, and that means like if you're thinking about whoever it is, a business owner, if I'm thinking about, um, it doesn't matter who I'm thinking about. Let's just say Rachel. Rachel is my idol. Then I would ask myself, would Rachel do this? Right. And if I think that she would, okay, that's a play like that. But I can always justify to no. Because also, if I say yes, she would, I would say why? Oh, well, because it has appreciation. It also is going to cash flow me right now. It also has tax benefits. There's all the reasons why I could tell myself. Or otherwise, I would say no, she wouldn't. Because she would probably say, let's make sure I buy an asset first before I start buying a consumer, whatever it is. Right. So I think that people just, if they ask themselves and they're honest with themselves, they can really start to take a turn in their life but let me ask you because a lot of what you've talked about thus far is if i can buy a property and turn it into a str right a short-term rental but for there's some people out there that says listen i can't necessarily afford a real because of where interest rates are and real estate hasn't come down yet so i've learned a little bit about something called like arbitrage right or i like how do you ever teach that strategy to other people or would you say nah that's not something that can really build what does that look like in your world my opinion is that you need to understand all strategies because it is the best the most profitable model out there but i do have an arbitrage or two as well and i do have a few co-hosting as well so there are three ways to host uh, short-term rentals Casanova you can either own it and then you furnish it and you rent it you can rent it from an owner and then you furnish it and you rent it as a short-term rental or you can partner with an owner and get a revenue share like you do all of the communications and you know that side of the business and they get you know a you know 70 percent and you get 30 percent or they get 75 percent you get 25 percent of uh the revenue that comes in so there are three ways to host with short-term rentals and I am doing all three because it just depends. It depends on where you are. You have to start with where you are. You know, I wish you can go and buy today, but if you can't, you can't. So how do we get you started? Something like an arbitrage may be a good deal for you. Something like uh, a co-host uh, similar to property management may be the way to go. So start with where you are. I don't look down on any of the methods at all because with real estate investing, it's such a cycle that you need to know how to operate no matter where you know where the cycle lands if we're in a recession it may be a moment for you to buy or it may be a moment for you to pause for a moment and look for something to to arbitrage because here's the deal initially i was very like nope nope to arbitrage just purchase just purchase but there was a, a landlord who knew what i was able to to do with a property and who wanted um, a, a tenant, which would be me, who wanted a tenant that would take care of the property, that would make sure that the property was in good shape in a year or two, uh, that would ensure that uh, all of the capital expenditure at CapEx, all of the repairs, all of that is uh, maintained. We actually take care of repairs, you know, under a certain dollar amount, I'm not bothering the landlord, you know? So he came up to me, he says, hey, I see what you're doing. I have a property that's becoming vacant. It's a good property. I think it'll fit your model. And, you know, knowing me again, I was like, oh, I don't know. But if a deal like that comes across your table, comes across your desk, you need to know how to take a deal down if it makes sense for you. And I looked at the deal. It was exactly my brand. It was the type of asset that I already had a team in that area that could manage that, you know, and I knew the spread between the monthly rent and what I could generate from it was so significant. I said yes. And that's how it started because I was not looking to arbitrage. You know, so that landlord is grateful. They're getting paid. They know that I run a business out of there and they know that if I, you know, my business is not running up and running, they won't get paid. They know exactly what I do for my business, you know, with short term rentals and they see my five star reviews. They see the guests are grateful and appreciative for that space. And the space is in showroom ready all the time. We have cleaners coming in multiple times a week. So for him, he reached out again. I've got two more. 
because my properties, you know, once the year is up, which we did renew, once the year is up, he has it in better shape <laughs> than when he handed the keys to me. So what is this space? Because we're gonna decorate it and deck it out and create um, that experience for our guests. So again, this it's interesting to me because it's not something that I was interested in taking down, but if there's a way to make a spread and I'm already doing it and it's within my brand, why not understand how to take down a deal as if, if it's right there in your lap, what are you going to do? Say no, right. <laughs> figure it out. If someone does not come to you, whoever the listener or the watcher is right now, even if someone doesn't come to you, what you just said, Rachel, is how they could approach someone else saying, Hey, I'm going to give this guest a phenomenal experience. I'm going to make sure that when I hand you back the keys, it's going to be in better condition than when you originally handed it to me. I am going to also make sure that I take care of the property, anything, you know, under a certain amount, those expenditures that you would have, I'm not going to bother you with those. I'm also going to make sure you get your guaranteed rent. I'm going to take my spread for taking care of the property, hiring the cleaner, everything else. All of these things is how you can approach someone else because someone else right now says, I don't have the time to manage this property. Plus, I know the property's worth X, but because of where interest rates and inflation and everything else is, I don't want to sell this property right now. I don't really want to go trying to find tenants or even manage the tenants and everything else. I don't want to do all of the communication because right now I just want to be with my grandkids or even just my wife. We want to keep traveling. These are all the problems that you can solve for someone else, right? So that was a whole masterclass within itself of how you can get started if you don't have any money to purchase the real estate how you can get started with arbitrage and the best thing that i say when i say that you hear someone else's story and it can be you is because just like you just said rachel you weren't looking so somebody else that is listening to this right now, maybe they don't have a clue of where they're going to get started in investing and building assets, but what can they do? Or that does not even say, what can they do? They just ran across the best model for them. Amazing people, just like you, because somebody else can hear this and they say, honey, we got it. Here's how we're about to take it down. Here's how we're about to get out of $500,000 in debt over the next 18 months. This is how we're about to start building a life by our design. So again, thank you. This is such phenomenal information. Let me ask you something of like how, when you're getting these properties, this is the last thing because people will say, okay, I'm willing to do that. But I noticed what she said is furnishing the properties. Have you come up with any strategies for people that say, well, I don't have, it's Especially if I'm going to try the luxury route, I don't have ten to twenty thousand dollars. What's a way that someone could get started furnishing these properties to still be able to give their guests an amazing experience? Oh, that's a great question, and there's so many nuances and ways that you can procure furnishing. So I'll I'll give a few um, strategies that I have used that have worked. First and foremost, you want to use really comfortable, uh, brand new um, mattresses and pillows. The sleep has to be high quality sleep, okay? The linens has, have to be nice and soft. Anything that touches your guest skin has to be soft. Be okay with investing a little bit, you know, there. However, when we started, we used Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, all of those places to look for individuals who are having moving sales, but in the higher cost of living areas within our, you know, area. So we went to the top area, like the Bugheads and, you know, like where, where all the rich people live. <laughs> And we wanted to know who was having a move. So-and-so is moving to Hawaii. They need to get rid of everything, you know? So that's one strategy that we use because oftentimes those homes are designed by interior designers and everything is cohesive. It's not matchy-matchy where it's like, eh, 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 like boring, but it's cohesive. It's well-designed, well-thought-out. So if you can take down an entire moving cell for like $8,000 or $10,000 and furnish a, an entire four bedroom, 
five bedroom home, that is a win. That's a huge win. And I know that um, that is a method that we use because we actually had some cash on hand. However, I know others who have gone into, you know, department stores such as uh, Ashley or Rooms to Go and started with a 0%, you know, one of those cards uh, that the furniture store will furnish you, same as cash in the next six months, generate the revenue and pay that off. So that's another method. And the third method that um, I have personally used though is uh, there's a website called BAC Auctions. Uh, BAC Auctions. So you ever see those big companies like Lennar Homes, D.H. Horton, like they yeah. build out a whole neighborhood, right? And that first or second home, that's the model home. Mm -hmm. So once that neighborhood is built out, they're taking down the model home, they auction off all of that. Wow. So I go to BAC Auctions, I've got my little reminder, and then I'll go in and I'll take down and purchase all of the furnishings from that property. I'll bid on all of it if it's in yeah. my area. So there, yeah. So if you're in an area where you see they're building, you know, some of these chain construction builders are building, uh, definitely sign up for BAC Auctions and look at the alerts. So it'll tell you if something's happened in Atlanta, in Texas, in, you know, North Carolina. So get those alerts and if it's nearby, yeah, go for it. Because it's, again, well designed. This is for the individuals who do not have an interior design background, but if you do, you're at an advantage. And so, and we fill things, you know, we use filler items with home goods, Ross, and, you know, just kind of fill out the decor. But we want to make sure we do have that one Instagrammable wall with the grass and neon signs. You know, yeah. you can get a lot of that off of a Home Depot, believe it or not, with the grass and then Amazon for the neon signs. So that's kind of what we do. I, I just gave... Gave it away all the, the secrets. Look, gave right. all the, the trade secrets are out there, my friend. <laughs> We love it. I'm sure. But the, that's, that's the thing though. Now somebody has to go out and execute on it, but more importantly, yeah. they have the inspiration because it only just takes that one step. And now they also have a mentor that they could go to that says, Hey, Oh my God, I heard you on the show. Um, I think this is exactly the path that I want to go down. I would love to have somebody that walks me through it just to make sure, because you can never have all of the secrets in one hour, right? There's, there's just so much in, in real estate. The greatest thing about it, which is the worst thing about it is no two days, no two deals are the same. <laughs> right so it's it's good because it keeps you on your toes but the problem is there's oh you, you're always your head's on a swivel oh, right man. there's always yeah. so many things that you would have never thought of right and all these other things like when you are first buying a house for fixing and flipping i know one of the biggest things that we ever ran into was i bought this house and the house was worth 175,000, but we wound up getting this house under contract for like 50,000, and um and it just needed some work but it wasn't dilapidated right so it was still used it was still able to be lived in and the owner did live in it um but it just was super outdated so we bought the house we wound up getting a really good deal on it he understood no issues at all well on the back side what we wound up finding out was because it had such amazing architecture the windows that we were going to have to purchase to to re because all of the windows uh, had the condensation and it was only cosmetic but it was still like hey we'd want to replace these because of where we were going to try to sell the house for and uh, those windows, we wound up getting bids on them. And I want to say the bids came out to being around $20,000 just for the windows alone. And it was like, oh my God. And so those are one of the things that you would have never known up front. Like you got to be in the deals. You got to talk to people who are obviously flipping houses. And I learned that on the back end, that one of the first things while everybody's always looking at the roofs and you know the plumbing, which those things are important as well, but also be looking at how old are the windows, right? Are they rotting in the wood seals? things like that that you're going to have to do so i think that again the information that you're sharing it just lets people know that at least they can get the first step which is the most important step and everything else would just work itself out so shout out to you for being able to share those things and i've never heard of you know i don't we even own airbnbs and uh i've never heard of bac auction so it's just interesting to even like i didn't know that and you know we're down here in dallas texas where they do have the oh, dr yeah. <laughs> And those people, and I was like, oh, so that's where they send all of their stuff, right? And so, um, yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal information. I know we're coming to the end on this thing. Uh, one of the questions, I, I love that you've shared so much of your journey. The one thing that I always know that uh, people always ask is, you know, we've heard a lot, a lot of your successes, um, but the one thing that 
we never talk about a lot or people don't talk about a lot in general is the failures. And so the question that I have for you is if there was one thing, cause I used to always ask the question of if you could change anything, what would you go back and change? And I got so much pushback on this always. It would be like, oh, I wouldn't change anything. It made me who I am today and da, da, da. And I get it, right? I get where, the, where we're going with that. But I would also say we would all change something, right? I would change losing my mom. I would, there's different things that in life if I could go back and change. So I've learned to phrase this in a different way that if there was one thing that you wish that you would have implemented sooner to accelerate your path on your journey and your dream to where you are today, what would that one thing be? Ooh, honestly, I think I would launch my midterm strategy a few individuals. However, with the midterm strategy, you get to host for 30 nights, you know, and we primarily focus on the insurance uh, policy holders, those homeowners that are displaced due to insure, uh, due to say a disaster that occurred um, with their property. So with that midterm strategy, hosting over the course of 30 days or three months, uh, our most recent guest um, that we acquired, we're hosting them for 12 months because of a fire and it's all paid for by insurance. So I wish I had started that strategy sooner and found out about that sooner as well, because that has been gangbusters for us, especially in the suburban areas. So again, lifestyle freedom, but time freedom as well. Yeah. <laughs> is definitely How do you something that I'm really excited about. Now, 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 like we were supposed to be wrapping up the show. Now you're just giving gems on gems. So it's like, wait, wait, wait. I emailed the other day and they said straight up, we're what, willing to pay premium. They're paying me Airbnb rates for these longer stays. So I'm looking around, like I have no vacancy. I have no house for them, but I'm not going to say no. Casanova, I already tell you, figure out how to take this down. I'm not going to, like who has a house? <laughs> who has right. something for me? I will buy a house this weekend or rent a house this weekend if I have to, because unfortunately, once you're in it, that's when you realize, oh my goodness, people are, their houses are getting burned down as a, at a higher frequency that I, I, I could have ever imagined, or there's a flood or a tree has fallen or any of those things, those policy holders, then um, they need a place to stay. And you know, with renovations, it's not going to be 30 days. They book for 30 days, but we keep them for 11 months. You know, we keep them for eight months. There's nothing that's going to be a 30 day turnaround when it comes right. to repairs Especially and renovations. Especially dealing with other people, like other people being contractors, right? They don't show up this day. Yes. And then supply sure. chain, Casanova, right? The supply chain is a mess too. Like we can't right. get this material or that material. There was some something missing with electrical and it took us forever to get, you know, that. And so... Definitely. So the insurance agents, not necessarily I actually reach out to some, let them know what I'm doing. They're excited, you know, but I never got any leads from them. So <laughs> maybe someone will have a better, better luck in their um, community. But you have local, you know, temporary housing agents. As soon as, you know, I made that relationship, I continue to guard, you know, facilitate that relationship. I'll email them and say, hey, don't forget about me if you need anyone, if someone um, is looking for housing. Remember, we're still here and we have a vacancy coming up, you know, December 15th. And so I want to be top of mind for those agents. And if you look online for any temporary housing agency that is in your local community, um, those are the individuals who actually do that work for the all states, the state farm, the, you know, all of the bigger um, arms. They don't themselves go out and find the property. There are large temporary housing agencies that are nationwide and then there are local ones that you can reach out to to let them know that you have you know furnish a furnished home for anyone who needs a place to stay and a few things that they love is if it's like um pet friendly they love that and so mm -hmm. i'm gonna get that gym out there so if you're not pet friendly i didn't start off pet friendly if you're not pet friendly you're leaving a lot of money on the table and they love accessibility if like there's a bedroom and a bathroom on the first floor they really really like that as well you know just to accommodate uh that clientele yeah again 
this is why so many gems right there's there's no one out there i think right now that if you have any type of an interest in real estate and in hosting experiences for people that you can't go out right now and start building your network right and even if that means that again you're you're solving a problem people need if they if there's a house fire right then they need to go out and find housing within the next two weeks one week right so now this is where you reach out to anybody who's a landlord or you say hey i can help you right you're trying to get this rented if you got it on zillow or if you got it on you know craigslist or something saying hey i'm looking for you know a tenant you approach them and say hey i have a tenant here's what we could do we could partner up maybe it's that 70 30 revenue model that you talked about maybe it's a 50 50 or maybe you find a way to if you're very experienced in real estate you find a way to to buy the house on land contract or seller financing whatever else that it could be and you know that now you have a temporary housing agency that's willing to pay you let's even just do an average of x amount so you put that in there you negotiate with the landlord and this is how you create that spread and you have ownership in the property if you can do it the right way so again phenomenal another gym that you dropped this has been such an amazing conversation um i want to be the first one if no one else tells you to say thank you and i appreciate you uh, for anyone we're going to make sure that we put all of the links to everything that you have going on in the show notes <laughs> but for somebody who wants to stay directly connected with you tell us where can they find you at uh, if you go to shorttermgems.com, that's S-H-O-R-T-T-E-R-M-G-E-M-S.com, you'll find all my social links and all of the things there. Cool. We'll, we'll definitely have that first and foremost in the show notes. Uh, but again, this is phenomenal. Let me ask one last question is for anybody who is, they've heard everything, they're inspired, but they have that little voice in their head. That little voice says that they're not smart enough. They're not strong enough, or maybe they just don't have enough resources. What's that one final thing that you would leave them with to get them to just take action? Mm. Whew, I've got so many things, but the one thing I would say is, and it's going to sound cliche, but bear with me. If not you, then who, right? Now is the time to start. Start by starting and it starts with you. There you have it. <laughs> well, remember dream builder you got to take action on something because if not that dream that you have and we all have a dream it's if you don't take action that will only merely be a fantasy that's all for this one we'll catch you on the next one